Oh, why, oh, why, oh, why did DJI have to go and do this? because they're an outstanding company, that's why. Now, before I continue with this video, please understand I am not affiliated, I'm not sponsored, I'm not anything to do with DJI. I even have to buy my own products. And that leads me nicely into, can you remember just before Christmas, it was only half a dozen videos back, I made a video outlining what equipment, in terms of camera equipment, I was gonna be taking on the road with me for this year, 2024, to make the videos that I make and uh, I'd whittled it right down and no sooner had I published that video in fact I think it was just in the queue waiting to go out on YouTube DJI made another announcement they thought outside the box yet again and this is what they did here we have a DJI Action 4 something I said I would not be buying because I have two Action 3s already and to be honest there's very little difference in picture quality between the 3s and the 4s. The 4 has a slightly bigger sensor so therefore it's slightly better in low light but really as a motorcyclist I don't spend an awful lot of time in low light certainly not at night time anyway so quite happy with my 3s well more than happy with the Osmo Action 3s however one other tool that I explained I had bought to put into the arsenal was the Osmo Pocket 3. I bought the Adventure Combo, I think it is, you'll have to forgive me with all these names. Uh, with the Adventure Combo, it comes with this. This is a little radio mic which transmits wires wirelessly uh, to the Osmo Pocket 3 without the need for a receiver plugged into the side of it, like I've always had in my Osmo Action 3s on the front of my helmet. Now, in many ways, this has been a game changer because it's done away with wires and I don't have to stick a lav mic into the side like I always did on the GoPro as well with a big clumpy wire hanging somewhere falling out of the helmet or whatever else connections coming loose so the wireless system was a brilliant way to go and DJI made that happen however now this transmits to this and it does away with the receiver. You don't need the receiver sticking out the side of the camera anymore. Not that I really minded that, but what I didn't quite like was the elastic band, and a few of you had commented on that. I only put the elastic band around the receiver and the camera just to keep the two of them together at sort of higher speeds. However, you don't need to worry about the elastic band anymore because you don't need it because this just transmits straight into the camera. Incredible. So hopefully by the time you're watching this video, you can buy these microphones as a standalone product and not only as a sort of part of the Pocket 3 Adventure Combo. There are far too many names for me to remember. Okay, before I head out on the road and test the different levels, because I know many of you will be very excited about this setup, but uh, as always, um, as soon as I mention how I'm recording sound, I sort of get a barrage of messages, which I don't mind, part of my gig, if you like, uh, and that's uh, part of the reason I do this. But um, a lot of you want to know what levels I've set the camera at and what levels I've set the mic at. Well, at the moment, you can't set the level in a mic it's automatic and because there's no receiver module you can't set the the tx which is the transmitter you can't set that through the receiver as you can do on the original dji mic system because it's done away with the receiver so the only level you can set is inside the osmo action 4 with that firmware upgrade and i'm pleased to tell you that um, i was a little bit worried about this when i bought the camera recently uh, because i thought maybe you can't go below zero maybe they haven't made this system for moto vloggers where there's a lot of noise from the motorbike there's also a lot of wind noise within the helmet and we're shouting a lot as well as we're moving along just to try and hear ourselves above the ambient noise so i thought if the sound level within the camera doesn't go below zero I probably won't even bother upgrading however took the chance and guess what sound level goes down to minus 12 so I'll show you how I mount this first of all and how I mount the Osmo Action 4 on the um, helmet and then we'll head out on the road and test a few different sound levels so I don't know about you, but I always wear a snood or a neck warmer whenever I go out on a motorbike, and it doesn't matter what time of year, I always sort of wear one, um, especially here in Ireland. <laughs> you sort of need to uh, to stop that draft. Now what I do, um, is uh, what I've always done really, uh, is to mount the mic inside the snood there, and if you're familiar with this system, you'll know that 
on the um, little clip of the microphone comes this magnet like that so I take the magnet off for this very reason um, just pop the microphone in there and then pop the magnet on the outside of the snood there which holds the microphone into place now I normally he says with it slipping down <laughs> the helmet does hold it into place I normally keep it to the side of my mouth because I like to be able to breathe uh, it's pressed against my skin there so it isn't going anywhere when your helmet is on and your snood is up around your ears um, and it, it doesn't pop too much either because it's not in the direct line of your mouth uh, sometimes I have mounted the microphone right in front of my mouth on the helmet where well, the straps come behind the chin guard of the helmet to secure um, the camera mount on but I've noticed a lot of popping because it's right in the way of your mouth when you're speaking uh, which isn't great for the signal so anyway that's how I mount that uh, let me show you how I mount the camera so here I have my helmet which I nearly always use uh, when I'm out motor vlogging be just because I have the mount fixed on it so um, what I do this is the DJI system of course so uh, that just clips on there like that and there we go and traditionally as I said I'd always have the receiver module sticking out the side of the camera like that with the elastic band around it um, but as you can see it has reduced the footprint and anything to make the front of the helmet lighter and smaller is a good thing in my book okay time to go out and check the levels so it's on the new action 4 camera be interested to see if there's any differences in the uh, picture quality first of all but the volume on the camera is set to zero on the, this no um, noise reduction is set to on or anything like that I might do that on the way back down from Coot Hill but at the minute the volume is set to zero I'm doing 80 kilometers an hour so it's a sort of average um, cruising speed I'm up to 100 there now be interesting to see I mean this isn't really to set the level as such this is to see whether it distorts Mr. Policeman out today. So as you could see on that clip that was distorting like mad. One thing I was really worried about was even though I know on the edit I can bring the level up what you can't do is to reduce the distortion which you can quite clearly hear um, on this clip uh, with the level set at zero it was way over distorted basically the signal to noise ratio with the mic where it is and all of the ambient sound there's just no way um, the system is going to cope with that uh, so let's try another level now at uh, with the settings at minus six okay so the transmitter sound now is uh, set at minus six on the camera this is the normal volume I would talk really on a vlog I'm not sort of trying to be quiet or speak any louder on purpose or anything like that now I have to say the the needle on the or the meters rather on the back of the screen on the action 4 um, look like they're really really over modern not as much as what it looked like when uh, it was set to zero but at minus six they're still hitting the absolute peak of the red constantly here so at minus six it was still distorted albeit it's better than it was when it was set to zero but at minus six it's still not good enough so my next setting now I'm going to try at minus ten and see how that is I'm saying minus ten it does go down to minus twelve which I'll be testing next but on my previous setup minus ten is the sweet spot so it'll be interesting to see how it is here so minus ten selected on the back of the camera and uh, be interested to see what that sounds like again I'm not speaking any louder or quieter or anything like that just speaking at a normal level what I would do normally when I'm out having a vlog I really hope this uh, works okay so I'll find another place to pull in and I'll change the settings from minus 10 to minus 12 on the next one and again minus 10 still isn't clean enough uh, for me uh, now I'm going to try minus 12 okay minus 12 on this one it's definitely not peaking as much there at a standstill on the back of the camera but we'll see what it's like when we're on the road
yeah, it's definitely not um, peaking as much. It looks like a healthy sound level at minus 12. It'll be interesting to see what it sounds like. It's still going up into the orange, but it's not. But it is actually touching the, the red peaking there when I am speaking there. But it'll be interesting to see how that sounds. Minus 12. Um, I'll be keeping it at minus 12, actually, because it does look a healthy recording level on the back of the camera. The transmitter, by the way, is in my snood. It's a day for sitting at home watching YouTube videos with a cup of tea, isn't it? And I hope you're doing just that. So there you have it, minus 12 is definitely the sweet spot. Uh, that sounds fantastic, if you ask me. One thing I did notice as well, I don't know if it's just that configuration with that microphone or whether the mic capsule is different on the mic 2 transmitter but it's picking up a lot more of the motorbike engine which i'm very excited about because as you know um, i've just taken ownership of the street triple 765 rs so i can't wait to go out on that bike using this setup because that's an engine which really needs to be heard so before i round off a couple of notes worthy of mentioning uh, one thing I did notice is that because I'm a sort of guy who likes to press the one button on the camera which powers it into life and starts recording immediately, it was taking the camera up to 25 seconds to receive the signal from the transmitter before it was connecting. It's done over a Bluetooth thing. But 25 seconds waiting for it to connect to the camera. I mean, I'm going to be long gone past the subject that I wanted to talk about. So that is not good. I have no doubt that shall be addressed in a, a future firmware upgrade. So one way around this is to keep the camera powered on like so and just use the start and stop button traditionally to start recording and stop recording. Uh, and if you keep the camera powered on, it'll stay connected to the mic system. Uh, unlike when you have to start it from scratch and then it needs to search for the signal. So that's that, that's a fair enough way of doing it uh, at the moment until they address it, like I say, in a future firmware upgrade. Uh, the batteries also last for ages on these cameras, something like well over an hour and a half anyway. So um, I, I carry three or four batteries uh, within the within the camera bag. So I've always got enough battery power anyway, um, just to keep the cameras powered on, like I say. The other thing is, if um, all goes pear-shaped, fear not, because this transmitter has something called 32-bit float in it. What that is, is basically, in, if you liken it to picture terms, it's basically the raw recording of the sound. So even though it might sound distorted on your camera, you can lift the sound straight out of the inbuilt recording within this transmitter, just open it up like any hard drive on your computer, and just drag the file or the folder onto your desktop, open it up, and there will be the sound file uncompressed in 32-bit float recording and um, I've tried it, um, I've checked it and it, it absolutely works 100% so if you're back home after a long day of riding with this system and you're worried that your sound is all oh, horrible and distorted even at minus 12, fear not you can always lift the sound from here as a safety and it'll be totally raw, totally uncompressed and unlimited. So there you go, folks. I hope that makes sense. I hope it wasn't too complex. I do laugh at some of the comments I get when I uh, do these sort of techie videos. Sorry about that. But listen, I know there's an awful lot of you out there as well who um, are, are mad keen to be using the same system as I do. And I, I feel as though I've always got to sort of push the boundaries because of what I do for a living anyway. And I, I use all of this equipment at work anyway. So it's good for me to exercise explore what's out there and I love uh, testing the latest bits and pieces of technology. Actually, come to think of it, I'm just a true nerd. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in once again. I'll see you this time next week for another video. Dave Perry, Wheelie Good TV, over and out.